So now that we have completed our uh, needs analysis, we said the next step is then to design the coaching session. Uh, and we know that when we design the coaching session, we now know that it's not just a design for knowledge only, it's also a design to increase skill and a design to shift attitude as well. And there's a tool uh, that, that we have covered already that will help us do this, and that is format. Why, what, how, what else, what if. So these principles still hold true for coaching. The details or techniques for uh, each of those principles change a little bit when we're in a coaching context. So the concept is coaching. The principles are why, what, how, what else, what if. Uh, and now we're going to look at the first, uh, the technique behind the first of those principles, and that is the technique behind the why component. So you might remember when we're talking about why, what we're doing is we're earning the right to run a coaching session. We're gaining their interest in a coaching session so that they are more likely to listen to what you have to say. Uh, and we identify that a technique that will help us with this, so now the concept becomes what, uh, sorry, now the concept becomes the why frame. The principles are have you ever and with them. And the technique behind have you ever, you might remember we said is we could do first position or second position. So we need to design a story where we start off where it puts the other person either in the first position or the second position. So to continue our example of uh, dealing with customer service, a first position type story for a person we're trying to coach in how to deal with customer complaints might sound something like... Have you ever found yourself answering phones with angry customers on the other end? Uh, and after a while, after about the third or the fourth angry customer, you're starting to feel a bit drained and a bit impatient and your usual levels of flexibility and patience just ain't there anymore. That's why we're here today, is to look at what it is we can do to reduce the number of customer complaints that we get, to increase the speed with which we can process those complaints, and so we reduce the amount of time we spend dealing with each angry customer, we reduce the veracity of their anger, and we maintain our standards of service at the same time. So that, have you ever was a story that puts the coachee in the first position. And the first position in this case is when they are answering the phones. A have you ever that puts them in the second position puts them in the position where they are the angry customer. That's the second position. So therefore, um, we might say something like, have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been an angry customer? where you've phoned up a faceless organisation and you've been on the phone to someone who obviously doesn't care and you've been put through the ringer and you've had to tell your story four or five times to four or five different people, uh, what's that like? Oh, yes, it's very frustrating, very annoying. That's why we're here today, is to look at what it is we can do to reduce the number of times that our customers feel like this to increase the likelihood that our customers' complaints are solved quickly so that when they call up, that they think that we are providing excellent service and also to maintain our standard of service as well. So that's an example of how we can use the have you ever combined with the WIFM, reduce, improve or maintain, uh, in order to build a wireframe for our coaching session. So if we've structured our wireframe uh, well, uh, we'll have a coachee that's eager to hear what we have to say at this point. So now we need to design our what frame. We need to design the what component of our coaching session. And this is where we need to revisit the uh, needs analysis that we did and to revisit the concept, the principles and the details of the content uh, that we designed. So just a bit of a refresher, the example that we were using there was the concept of how to deal with uh, customer complaints. So the concept was dealing with customer complaints. The key principles were to listen, ask, thank, think and get back. And the details existed were things that existed beneath each one of those. So now in the what frame, what we need to do is we need to chunk 
and sequence this information. So we need to revisit this information and put it in some sort of bite-sized chunks and some sort of order that's going to make sense to the coaching so it's easily digestible. And you might remember we talked about when it comes to chunking uh, that the conscious mind can remember seven plus or minus two things at any one time. Any more than that and we start to go into overwhelm. It becomes very difficult for us to consciously remember a 15 step process, a 12 step process. So we need to chunk and sequence our information. We need to chunk our information into chunks of seven plus or minus two. Even if we do have a 15 step method, we may have three key principles and under each of those principles, there may be five, four or five things that we need to remember. So we've still got all 15 points. We've just put them into bite-sized chunks. So it is far easier to remember those chunks than it is all 15 laid out on the same logical level. Then we also needed to sequence the, organ uh, the information and we identified there's a number of different sequences that we can use. First of all, chronological, the order of time in which the sequence happens. This happens first, then this happens second, then this happens third. Perhaps that is the most obvious way of presenting the information. Sometimes it may be a procedure or a process. So it's a step method, first step, second step, third step, fourth step. Perhaps that's the best way to, to sequence our information. Another way could be inductive or deductive. Sometimes it's wiser, dependent upon the audience member, dependent upon the information, to start off with the concept and to pull it apart into its component pieces and then look at each component piece uh, until we come back and we have built the whole picture. So deductive, here's the concept, let's pull it apart into its component pieces. Sometimes inductive is the best approach to look at all of the things that we need to consider and then to group them and give that group a name and then to group all of those groups and give the final group a name. So that is inductive, building it from the ground up. And another process that might be used, another sequence that might be used, is the uh, priority sequence. So what takes priority over what? If this happens, then we need to do that after this happens. That takes precedence to this and perhaps priority is the best sequence to use. So we need to revisit the information that we wish to communicate to this person in terms of the what and we need to apply these key principles to it so that we can put it in bite-sized understandable chunks. So we've started to shape the attitude through the why frame. Um, we have increased the knowledge through the what frame. And now we need to look at the how component of our coaching session. Uh, and the how component of our coaching session is not only the skills component of our coaching session, the practice component, it's also an opportunity here to continue to shape the attitude. So. The concept here is how. The principles that we need to look at and consider are demonstrate, practice, and feedback. When it comes to demonstrate, of course, the technique is for us to be able to show how it's done so that the person can see it in action. We may be able to demonstrate, we may not. We may need to get someone else in to demonstrate. We need to have the tools available that are required for the demonstration and we need to show them how the step methodology that we presented in the what frame works um, when we're actually doing it. So that's demonstrate. We also need to make sure that they practice. Uh, this is the skills component. And we talked about there's a number of ways we can get people to practice. Uh, we could do a role play. Some things are interpersonal skills. They, re they are skills that are associated with dealing with other people. Uh, and so therefore, role play may be most appropriate. Uh, other skills that we're trying to teach people in uh, could be process or procedural skills, in which case maybe a dummy run might be most appropriate. We can pretend that there is a certain situation and we can prepare a dummy run for people to, propose, uh, to, to work their way through. Another way is to get people to work on a project, a past project, a current project or a future project. Now, 
Word of warning, a little red flag to wave here. You might remember we said that what a good coach will do is that they won't allow the person to practice on the field. They take them off the field to get them to practice. So a little word of warning here, avoid the temptation of always getting people to practice with a current project, thinking that you're killing two birds with one stone. Because often what will happen is that they will make a mistake and that mistake will need to be corrected on a live project. So perhaps it is wiser to use a past project, one that has already been completed and already been done, and so the person can practice on that project. Perhaps we can get them to practice on a current project, but not in a live sense. Perhaps we can get them to practice on the current project in an offline component, and also perhaps get them to practice for a future project, in which case we're also getting to, to pre-think things through to prepare. Um, and the third principle in the how frame is, of course, the feedback. Um, as they are practising, we need to observe what it is that we're doing and we need to provide them with some feedback. So as we're observing them, we are looking for three things. We are looking for what it is the person does effectively, what they could do more of, and what they could improve. And we need to look for all three things because sometimes we identify that some people have a preference for what they prefer to notice when watching other people's performance. Some people watch other people's performance and prefer to notice where they went wrong. And that's all the feedback they will give. No, that's wrong, that's wrong, wrong code, and you'll need to redo that. All right, sort of thing. So they've only identified what is wrong. Only identifying what is right is equally insidious. Um, okay, so that's great. That's excellent. You've got really nice handwriting. Do you know that? Fantastic. Okay, thanks for that. Fantastic. All right, I'll take it from here. And I have to fix this, and I have to fix that, and I'm equally a problem. We need to provide balanced feedback, keeping in mind that this may be the person's first or second attempt at this task. So a way of providing balanced feedback is to look for what the person does effectively, what they could do more of, and what they could improve as well. Once they've practiced in the how frame, we have one final attitude just to check in on the attitude, on the commitment uh, to actually doing the task this way after they leave the coaching session. And so that is the what else, what if frame. Uh, so the concept is what else, what if. The key principles uh, that we need to think about are the questions and also our role changes to colleagues. Now, with the role changing to colleague, you might remember that we identified that our role needs to change for each of these frames. In the Y frame, we are the motivator. You can do it, fantastic. Have you ever been in excellent opportunity, reduce, improve, maintain? You can do it. We need to be the motivator. In the what frame, uh, our role is to become the teacher. So the first step, the concept is, the principles are, this is what you do. In the how component of the design, our role becomes a coach. So we're standing, watching the person, having a go, looking over their shoulder, looking for effectively do more of and improve. So then when it comes to discussion after they've had an experience, we are now a colleague because they have also had an experience. And we can swap those experiences and use that to make sure that we're shaping the attitude in the direction that's going to be most useful to get the job done. So our role changes to colleague. Uh, uh, also, what we need to do is we need to debrief. We need to ask some questions. We need to get people to think. And this is an excellent opportunity not only to shape attitude, but also to start to identify that there is so much more that we could spend time on, that we could talk about, so much more yet to learn. Uh, and the way we need to do this is to, first of all, is to pre-frame before the person practices. So we need to actually sort of go back to before the person does the role play, before the person practices with the dummy run, before the person practices with the project, and we need to pre-frame that practice. We need to ask people to look for something in that experience. So it's not just about practicing the skill, now it's about identifying something from that experience. And this is how we start to shape attitude. So this is where we say something like, on the one hand, yes, this is just one of those dicky things you've got to do in a coaching session like this, quite correct. 
On the other hand, as you do this, what I would like you to notice is, and then we ask them to look at certain things in the activity that they're about to complete so that when they get to the other end and we ask them some questions, they've got something half intelligent to be able to say. Now, we don't want to give them the answer. We don't want them to, we don't want them to say something to them like, as you do this, what I'd like you to notice is how much better it is to do it my way rather than your way sort of thing. That's not going to work. What we need to do is we need to say something like, uh, as you do this, what I'd like you to notice is what happens up here, what happens down here, uh, what makes it easy, what makes it difficult, uh, what the customer's response is, these sorts of things. Uh, and if we can ask people to uh, notice these things, it's going to dramatically increase the likelihood that when we get to the question asking section, they're going to have something intelligent to say. And then it becomes about asking questions, debriefing questions. And then we can ask the questions that link to what it is we ask the person to look out for and to notice. So if we ask them to notice what it was like, what was happening up here and down here, these become the questions. So what were you thinking? What were you feeling as you were doing that? If we ask them to notice how what made it easy or what made it difficult, they're the questions. So what uh, made that difficult? What would make it easier? How would you do it differently next time? If we ask them to notice the customer's responses, they become the questions. So what could you say about the customer's response? What was their response to that phrase? What was their response to that question? These sorts of things. Then what we have now is a very solid design uh, that uses format once again to a slightly different bent where we've got slightly different techniques slightly different details, but the principles remain the same and we have designed our coaching session and we can now run our coaching session.